Hello, dedicated educators. We all share a common goal to see every one of our students thrive in reading and ultimately succeed across their academic subjects. We know that strong reading skills are the foundation for learning and that's where powerful tools like CAPDRE Basics come in. CAPDRE Basics is more than just an assessment. It's a foundational reading skills assessment backed by extensive research designed to help us understand each student's unique reading profile, their strengths, and areas needing improvement. It helps us identify at-risk readers more accurately, tailor interventions, and monitor growth over time. Although for this powerful tool to truly serve our students and guide our teaching, there's one crucial principle we must master, fidelity in assessment administration. Think of it this way. If you're trying to diagnose a complex issue, whether it's a car problem or a student's reading challenge, you need accurate, reliable information. Just as a doctor needs to understand the cause of a headache to prescribe the right treatment, not just give everyone the same medication, we need to pinpoint the root cause of a student's reading difficulty. This is where fidelity is absolutely crucial. In education, fidelity means implementing something exactly as it was intended to determine its effectiveness. For Read Basics, this means administering the assessment according to its standardized procedures. Why does this matter so much? Because the deep insights Read Basics provides into a student's foundational reading skills are only valid when administered with fidelity. Even small changes to the administration process, perhaps simplifying a direction or altering timing can lead to unreliable results and undermine the consistency of data across your classroom, your school, or even benchmark periods. This lack of consistency means it's incredibly difficult to track growth or identify true trends which means we can't confidently use the data to inform our instruction or intervention strategies. Beyond adhering to the assessment protocol ourselves, it's equally important to adequately prepare our students for the testing experience. Our goal is to ensure the assessment truly reflects what students know and can do, not how well they navigate a new testing environment or deal with distractions. This preparation helps us get the most accurate data, which in turn helps us create the most effective instructional plans. When you talk to your students about Read Basics, it's vital to explain why their best effort matters so much. You can tell them something like, this isn't just another test. It's an important tool that helps your teachers understand you better as readers. Think of your teachers as coaches, and this assessment is a way for us all to get a clear picture of your unique reading skills and where you might need a little extra support to become stronger. You could say something like, when you try your absolute best, even on questions that might feel tricky, it provides the most accurate information, and accurate information is like having a super detailed map that shows your teachers the best path to guide every student in their personal reading journey. Please tell your students not to rush on the questions. It's much better to take your time and think carefully about your answers than to hurry to finish every single item. If you do run out of time on a section, don't worry, you won't be penalized and it's unnecessary to answer all questions in a subtest to get an accurate score. Just focus on giving your best answers rather than rushing to get through as many questions as possible. Also, remember this is a silent reading assessment. You'll be reading the questions to yourself and while I'm here to support you and make sure you're comfortable and answer questions before we start, I won't be able to help you with the test questions themselves during the assessment. Teachers, please note, Read Basics is designed to assess silent reading ability. 
And while students can hear test directions read aloud, the actual assessment items are not to be read to your students, nor are they to be translated. This is critical to accurately measure the intended reading constructs. So how do we best prepare our students for Read Basics? It starts even before they log in. Here are some quick tips drawing directly from the CAPTA Read Basics Educator Manual and the Fidelity Checklist. Number one, your own preparation is key. First, familiarize with the assessment structure. Take the CAPTA Read Basics Introduction and Training Session. Understand the skills measured, the number of sections, and the expected duration for each subtest. Knowing this helps you gain confidence and effectively guides your students. Number two, technology check. Before the testing day, ensure all devices are fully charged and that your internet connection is stable. Confirm that all necessary student logins and accounts are accessible and that students are in a secure, distraction-free browsing environment Nothing derails an assessment faster than a technology glitch. Number three, license and account verification. Double check that you have the adequate number of student licenses available and that all student accounts are confirmed and logins tested. Number four, optimal testing environment. Prepare a quiet distraction-free space for students to take the assessment. Some students may benefit from specific seating arrangements or environments that reduce distractions. So consider preferential seating or a quiet corner for those who may need it. Set clear expectations for students. Talk to your students about the assessment. Tell them to do their best and that this is a silent reading assessment meaning no help should be provided during the test. And lastly, leverage the accommodations. CAPTU Read Basics offers built-in accommodation settings. Please make sure to apply these as appropriate for individual students aligning with their IEPs or other support plans. These can include extended time, one and a half or two times, Presentation settings like adjusting text, font, size, and color themes for readability, especially for students with visual impairments. Students can also control these themselves unless you choose to lock the settings. Support for keyboard navigation for those who don't use a mouse. Students can use keys one through four to select answers. The listen button for human read directions but remind them that this is for directions only, not testing items. The option for a designated adult to input proxy responses on their behalf. Flexible use of alternative devices like tablets and also allow for extra breaks between sections as needed to manage testing fatigue. By diligently following these pre-administration steps, we create an equitable and consistent testing experience for all of our students. This isn't just about compliance, it's about ensuring that the data we collect truly is reflective of each student's abilities. When the data is accurate, we gain the instructional power to identify specific skill gaps and tailor our multi-tier systems of support inter interventions effectively. Accurate data leads to personalized learning paths, allowing us to lead students to the on-grade level reading comprehension destination, even if they're starting from different places. This precise understanding helps us put together the right instructional groups and design interventions that truly address their unique needs. So let's commit to administering Read Basics with the highest level of fidelity. When we do so, we ensure that the insights we gain are powerful and precise, enabling us to make informed instructional decisions that truly accelerate learning and foster equitable literacy outcomes for all of our students. 
Thank you for your dedication to student success. I hope this has given you a clearer picture of what fidelity looks like in Read Basics and how it supports successful implementation.